Okay, what's the secret of a good lens that you don't get? And most people don't get it. Um, I get, let me be brutally honest, I get a crap load of emails from people it's like, oh my god, I've been shooting for 20 years or something, and I bought this old lens that you recommended, and man, oh my god, the pictures are just jumping off the page like a hologram. A lot of them don't use the word hologram, but that's basically what they're saying. You kind of know how, like, we have all these modern cars that, uh, you know, have a button for, like, uh, massaging your testicles or, like, you know, rubbing your neck. You know, just 10,000 little buttons for GPS and watching. But ultimately, they're just, like, plastic crap that is designed to self-destruct. And all these cars out there that uh, people collect, people with more money than God. People with more money than all of you combined, basically. They are these old metal cars that were built with class and style. And they keep rocking, and they're just, they're just the shiznits, right? Yeah, exactly. Here's what you don't understand about lenses. Lenses have improved drastically, really, only in two areas. The ultra-wide lenses have gotten a lot better. Um, by some makers. Nikon's ultra wide lenses, whew, they really improved. Like the 20mm 1.8G, the 24mm 1.8, um, the 16mm uh, fish eyes, a lot better than the older fish eyes used to be. Um, the telephotos really have not changed, not in the primes, like the 300 primes, the 400. Now, even back 20 years ago, those lenses, like the 400-35 I got, which is an AIS lens from decades ago, that lens is absolute perfection. That's a manual focus lens, however. Okay, obviously not very good for sports photography. Zoom lenses, um, yeah, serious improvements. Like ultra zoom lenses back in the day, they were a joke. Like the new Nikkor to 200 to 500 millimeter, awesome. The lenses that haven't changed are the bread and butter lenses. They've actually gotten worse. Now the autofocus has gotten better, but between 35 millimeters in uh, primes, between 35 millimeters and uh, about well, all the way up to 600, nothing has changed. Actually, things have gotten worse. They're being made faster cheaper. There are many ways of making a lens. Let me assure you, there's actually pressure mold uh, formation. Uh, they're actually using plastic uh, composite aspherical's. The old methodology that you would see from like 20 years ago where they'd actually stood up, and I, I made glass, cut down glass lenses. Not only glass, but mostly more plastic and polycarbonate. The old machines that actually the, you, the person would actually have to stand over them where they'd have machines that would drip the polishing compounds. It'd just take forever to grind those elements. Just forever. That's the reason why Nikon is dropping the production. Not just because they're made in Japan, which is high labor costs. Obviously so, and they're better construction. But the, actually, the way those lenses are ground, the actual elements in it, very time intensive, very laborious cost margins are... It's like, well, that's an expensive lens. Yeah, but nevertheless, the cost margins are like... You see this compass? Now, this is like a Rolex. I use a compass for everything. This is, you can actually see where the chrome is kind of worn thin here on the side. This is uh, uh, chrome plated brass. It's made by Kohenor. This is basically like, basically like the Rolex of compasses. I can go out anywhere right now and buy a, a compass. It'll be an absolute piece of crap compared to this Rolex of compasses. This thing is silk, sex, and sugar. It's just smooth perfection. I I have a lot of writing instruments and compasses. I use these for drafting and drawing and creating things and even light mods. I need a compass. You know, there's absolutely been nothing made since these. Konor is still in business. Uh, this one, I think, is made in Germany. A lot of Konor stuff is based in Czechoslovakia. I think this one actually says made in Deutschland. Yeah, it does say Germany on there. Yeah, it does say Germany. Um, don't make these anymore. Rolex. Rolex. Absolute perfection. Um, what has improved is autofocus acquisition. Now, you see, this is a kind of the neat point. The bread and butter lenses between, like, 35 millimeters... Up to, you know, it includes 300, 400, 500 millimeter primes. Let's say 35 millimeters to 200 millimeters in primes, okay? 
Those have not only not improved in the past 20 years, they've gone downhill. And if you disagree with me, you can kiss my butt because I'm 100% right on this and I know more about lenses than you do. Well, that's just an egotistical statement. Yeah, okay, fine. It's still true. They've gone downhill. The same way mass production crap has taken everything. That's why these people with more money than God, more money than you got, and all your buddies combined have together. They are sticking their money like in cars, for example. They're sticking them in the classics, the stuff that was handmade, precision, fine equipment, you know? Not in the injection molded, super thin sheet metal plastic crap that's been made in the past 20 years. And lenses really are like that. Between 35 millimeters and basically 200 millimeters, things have gone. Whew, they've not gone like this. It's like, well, no, these modern lenses, are, they've got less chromatic aberration and they've got super fast autofocus. Well, excuse me, bitch. Uh, excuse me, uh, honey doll. Excuse me, baby cakes. Um, I'm pretty sure that when it comes to landscapes and portraiture, you know, you don't have an issue with your model jumping around like a, a squirrel on crack. You know, it's like, stand over there, hold your chin like this. You know, they take direction from you. The landscapes, you sure as hell don't. Oh my god, I got autofocus tracking issues on this landscape. Everything's spinning. And it's like, no, you're drunk. Nothing's spinning. So you have no issues with autofocus tracking problems when it comes to landscapes and actual genuine portraiture. So I don't give a damn when it comes to landscape, architectural, portraiture, how much faster the autofocus has got. Don't give a crap in hell because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sports, action, wildlife, yeah, up there, matters. That's wonderful. It's great. It's great like that Nikkor 200 500 millimeter has basically almost five stops of vibration reduction. I mean, I made a video proving that I could handhold that sucker at 500 millimeters at a thirteenth of a second and take a perfectly crisp shot. That's amazing. That's wonderful. But things have gone downhill between 35 millimeters, basically, and 200 millimeters. And you don't get it. And other people out there don't get it. And they just don't have a damn clue. There's all these awesome lenses out there in the world. Thank God Nikon's been spitting out a lot of lenses for decades. You see, also, the other problem is, is that when you want to buy a really awesome old lens, Nikon don't make a dime off of a used lens you buy off of eBay. Or off of a lens that they don't make anymore. They want your money. And when you buy a lens that has not been made in 20 years, uh, they don't get any of that money. No, someone else in Japan on eBay gets it. So Nikon and Canon and the rest of these people, they would rather that, you, you know, they would rather slap you in the face and, uh, and uh, other things I won't mention than buy an old lens that they don't make no more. It's like, well, this lens is awesome. Yeah, but we suggest you buy the smarter lens, you know, because we still make the... No, it's because they don't make any profit off of you buying that awesome old stuff. They don't make any money. Ha 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 ha, this is the point of revelation. Ha 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 ha, oh my god, that makes so much sense. Yeah, they don't want you buying that stuff. They want you buying the new plastic crap that's spit out of China and Thailand that they made really cheap, but they still charge a lot of money for. Oh yeah, baby. We're going to offshore this stuff from Japan. We're going to make these lenses cheaper, faster, um, out of plastic. And we're going to charge a lot of money. And that's what's going to improve our cash flow, baby. We don't want you buying that old awesome stuff off of eBay. No, 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 no. That don't make us no money. That does not improve our uh, bottom line. No, that does not improve our uh, portfolio of our stock profile on NASDAQ. No, we don't want you buying that stuff. We want you buying this plastic crap we're making in Thailand and China. Ni hao. You get me? You feel me? Do you feel me, brother? You see this? There is nothing that steps within a thousand miles of this that's been made in the past ten years. Nothing. This is... I've got four of these. It's like any time I see a used one of these, I buy it, which is really stupid. Because one of them is more than enough to last anybody a lifetime. This is real precision, baby. They don't make this anymore. You know why? 
because <clears throat> this is a society of disposable. This is a society with a built-in, um, what's the exact word that it's specifically called? It is uh, called, uh, oh, where things are designed to fall apart. I'm having a brain fart because it's like 10 o'clock now. Uh, it's designed to fall apart. Uh, even Apple president talked about that. He made a slip of boo-boo that uh, he said that his products were designed. And everybody does that. It's designed to fall apart. Society of disposable. When you make something that will last someone a lifetime, then what you did as a company was screw yourself because you want that piece of crap falling apart every four years so the person will come back and buy another one. Yeah, baby. We don't want to make something that will last you a lifetime. That don't make us much money, baby. No. <laughs> no, it does not. So... That's the secret of lenses that you don't understand. And all the rest of these morons out there, I've been slamming the Nikkor 105 f1.4 because the images from it suck. It's got a price as if it were made in Japan. Not only does the lens have crappy output, the lens is made out of plastic, it's made in China, it has an astronomical price tag, and it is the lens elements in it, of which there are too many, are made using an inferior, fast, stupid-ass, cheap methodology. The images at f1.4 on that new Nikkor 105 f1.4 suck. They suck, Fanny. They suck. And for $2,200, I mean, kiss my butt, I could buy four lenses that will just pound the piss out of that. I mean, with that kind of money, I could buy a 105 f2 DC Nikkor, an 85mm 1.4 Zeiss, and a couple of other lenses that are equally better. So, I mean, I'm laughing at all the dumbasses that are buying that lens. I mean, you're just like, oh my god, look how big this lens is. The front elements is as big as my neck. It's, yeah, you're an idiot. You're, you're just a stupid idiot. Okay? Oh, but you know, it's, 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 no, no, shut up. You don't know any better. You just don't, you know. You're trying to rationalize your purchase of an expensive lens made out of plastic, made in China, with an astronomical price tag, as if it were made in Japan, which it is not. Okay? And therein is the secret of lenses that uh, you will not read in any photography magazine or over on the board of Diaper and Pee Review where all the uh, brain-dead cockroaches and knuckle-dragging morons hang out. Okay? Bye! <laughs>